Hello everyone, the purpose of this video is to introduce conversions as well as the concept of density and to solve problems over conversions and density. The first part here is about rules of rounding off. I'll let you read that, make sure you go over it, review how to round off based upon the number of decimal places or significant figures. Uh, any conversion involves two terms, the conversion factor and conversion statement. A conversion statement is a relation between, between two units. Uh, so one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. This is a conversion statement that reflect the relation between inch and centimeter. And from the conversion statement, you can derive conversion factors that enable you to convert between those two units. For example, if you want to convert inches to centimeters, you have to multiply by the conversion factor that has inch in the denominator and centimeter in the numerator uh, so that the inch will cancel out and you'll get the answer in centimeters. So if someone is 6 foot 1 inch tall, which is equivalent to 73 inches, you can convert his height from inches to centimeter by multiplying by the conversion factor that has inch in the denominator and centimeter in the numerator and then you plug the numbers one inch is 2.54 centimeter inch here will cancel out and you'll have 73 times 2.54 centimeter divided by one and this will yield 185 centimeters notice here when we do conversions the calculation will involve the units as well, not only the numbers. This method of conversion is called dimensional analysis. Let's look at some more examples here. We'll start first with examples that require only one conversion. For example, if you want to convert 58 kilometers to miles, and you are given here the kilometer value, which is 58 kilometers, and you are given the conversion statement that relate kilometer to miles. To solve this problem, we'll start first by writing the map, the units you want to convert from, which will be on the left of the arrow, and then the unit you want to convert to, which will be on the right of the arrow. That's step number one, which is identifying the problem. Step number two is to set up the calculation so that the units you want to convert from will be cancelled out and the unit you want to convert to will be left over from the calculation. So here you'll start by what you are given which is 58 kilometers multiply by and then you write the division line. In the numerator will be the unit you want to convert to and in the denominator you'll have the unit you want to convert from. Now as you see here kilometer will be cancelled out based upon this setup and you'll be left off with the mile as your answer. So step number two deals with units. Step number three, that's when you plug the numbers. It's from the conversion statement, the conversion statement tells us that one kilometer is 0 0.62137 miles. So we'll place one beside kilometer and we'll record 0 0.62137 beside miles. So now 0.62137 goes beside mile and one beside kilometer. And now we can do the calculation. The calculation is basically, as you see in step four, kilometer will cancel out here. And you are left with 58 times 0.62137 miles over one. When you multiply 58 by 0.62137, uh, this will yield 36.0 miles. And you always try to round off so that the number of figures here is equal to the number of figures you are given in the input. The input here is 58 kilometer, 58.0, it has three figures. So you round off your answer to three figures as well. Okay, question number one in the discussion exercises. Try to read this question and solve it. Uh, try to think about what you are converting from and what you are converting to. And then pause this video and work it out. After you work it out, you can go ahead and play this video. Okay, I assume you already solved it. So let me uh, go over them and recall that all the solutions to those questions are on Blackboard. Uh, so I'm going to go over guideline. I'm not going to go over the whole answer. So here you are given the relation between pounds of tomatoes and the price of pounds of tomatoes. So it's relation between what? Between dollar and pounds. Uh, so basically, if you want to write the conversion statement, the conversion statement will be one pound is equal to 1.28 dollars. And we are talking about 
one pound of tomato. So here in the problem it asks you how much will it cost to buy five pounds of tomatoes. So we need to find the cost which is the dollar and you are given the quantity of tomatoes to be five pounds. So here if you want to, to do step number one which is drawing the map we are going from five pounds to what to dollars. We are converting five pounds to dollars and now you can go ahead and set the equation Step number three, you multiply five pound by the conversion factor that will cancel out pounds. So pound will be in the denominator and will give you the answer in dollars. So dollar has to be in the numerator. Uh, and then step number four is plugging the values. One pound, so we place one beside pound, is equal to 1.28 dollars. So 1.28 will be in the numerator. And what we are doing here, we are multiplying five pounds by 1.28 dollars over one pound. Pound will cancel out. And you'll have 5 times 1.28 dollars. Now notice here that the answer will be more than 5. And that's what you expect. Because 1 pound will yield 1.28 dollars. So you're going from big unit to small unit. When you go from big unit to small unit, the number has to increase. Always decreasing the unit will increase the number. Okay, now try to work the second problem before you continue watching this video. So go ahead and pause the video and solve this problem after which you can play it again. Okay, I'm going to assume that you already solved the problem. Uh, so let's look at them. Uh, now in this problem you are given the amount which is three dollars and you are asked to find the number of pounds so now we are converting from what from dollars to pounds and we still have the relation between dollar and pound to be 1.28 dollar equal to one pound so now we'll start with three dollars and we have to multiply it by the conversion factor that will cancel out dollars so dollars has to be in the denominator and we'll yield an answer in pounds so pounds has to be in the numerator and now we go ahead and plug the numbers. Numbers come from the conversion statement. So one pound is equivalent to 1.28 dollars. As you see here, dollars will cancel out and we are dividing three by 1.28 and we'll get the answer in pounds. Since we are converting from dollar to pounds and we saw that pound is bigger than dollar because one pound is equivalent to 1.28 dollars. So here we are going from small to big, small unit to bigger unit. We are increasing the unit the units when we increase the units we expect the numbers to what we expect the numbers to decrease so the answer will be less than three okay we learned in the previous lesson about the relation between prefixes within the international system uh, one milligram is 10 to the negative three grams so when you want to convert 245 milligrams to grams you have to multiply by the conversion factor that will have milligram in the denominator so that milligrams will cancel out and has grams in the numerator and you do the same thing here milligrams will cancel out you are applying 245 by 10 to the power negative 3 10 to the power negative 3 is basically 1 over 1000 so you are dividing 245 by 1000 and that will yield 0.245 grams now there is another method here when you deal with prefixes within the international system you can always convert by moving the decimal point either to the left or to the right what will determine where you move it is whether you are going from big to small or small to big now here you can see we are going from milligrams to grams so we are going from small unit to big unit. So we are increasing the unit. When we increase the unit, we expect the number to decrease. And the number will decrease by moving the decimal point to the left. Now the question is, how many times should we move the decimal point to the left? Since milligram is 10 to the power negative 3 grams, so you have to move it to the left three places. One, two, three and this will yield 0.245 grams. Now let's try to convert 45 kilometer to meter in dimensional analysis as the method. The map, we are converting 45 kilometer to meter. And we know the relation between a kilometer and meter. A kilo of anything is 1,000 of that thing. So one kilometer, 10 to the power three of a meter. So now we go ahead and set the calculation. We start with the unit we are given. 45 kilometer multiplied by the conversion factor that has kilometer in the denominator and meter in the numerator and as you see here kilometer should cancel out we get the answer in meter and now we plug the numbers the numbers come from the conversion statement one kilometer is equal to 10 to the power 3 meter so 10 to the power 3 goes beside meter 
and one goes beside kilometer so basically we are applying 45 by 10 to the power 3 and this will give you 45,000 meters okay if you want to write it in a scientific notation uh, 45,000 meters you move the decimal point four places to the left so this will be 4.5 times 10 to the power 4 meters okay which is this answer here uh, question number four we are asked to convert 2.5 megabytes to bytes and we are using the moving decimal point method okay we are not using the dimensional analysis method so again here we are going from 2.5 megabytes and we want to convert it to bytes now we know mega of anything is what mega of anything is 1 million of that thing so 1 megabyte is equivalent to 10 to the power 6 bytes so now we know that we have to move the decimal point 6 places since the relation is 10 to the power 6 now the question is should we move the decimal point to the right or to the left now what will determine that is whether we are going from big to small or small to big are we decreasing the units or are we increasing the units now megabyte is bigger than bytes so basically we are decreasing the unit if the unit are decreasing then the number has to be increasing so for 2.5 we have to move the decimal point six spaces to the right okay now when you move it to the right let me show you here 2.5 you move it one place it will become 25 when you move it two places you'll start adding zeros so it will become 250 three places another zero four places another zero and so on yield 2.5 million as we expect so the answer would be 2,500,000 which is 2.5 million or you can write it as 2.5 times 10 to the power 6 okay this is the end of part one where we covered how to convert units and we focused on one step conversions in the next video we'll talk about conversion between area and volume units and also a conversion that require more than one step